Welcome to another episode of Gaming and Performance. I am back with another video and this time I want to show you how to lower your latency so that you can be competitive in first person shooter games. I do apologize that it took me so long to create this video. However, I have done some extensive research to make sure that the options I give you actually does work because there are a lot of placebo tweaks out there that don't work although they may initially seem to do something but really don't and or that you may come across a tweak that may work but the side effect is so severe you have to revert the tweak back in order to do other aspects of PC computing or you know being able to use your word processor, being able to use the internet, right? Be able to get online, to be able to use other applications within Windows, for example, without it, you know, spazzing out on you. Those are the kind of things I, I will try my best to avoid, which is why I try to take my time and see that these things work or not. So having said that, let's begin. Now I want you to download an application that you probably heard of called Latency Mod. I'll leave a link in the description and what you want to do is reboot the PC and wait two minutes for it to load up whatever it needs to load up because sometimes it does take a minute or two after you get to desktop before it settles down a little bit even if you have a SSD so you might want to give it two minutes now I want you to use latency mon you know hit the play button and do two minutes worth of recording then stop it and I want you to take a screenshot of the main tab, the processes tab, the driver tab, and the CPU tab. Take screenshots of that. Put it in a folder on your desktop and save it for later because this is going to be your litmus to show if whether or not what I suggest to you actually improves on latency or not. That's how transparent I want to be with this because I don't want to give you something that you may say, well, I think it worked. You have nothing to go on other than my own. I can show you my screenshots, but it don't mean anything to you. You have to see if there's an improvement or not. So having said that, here's what I want you to do. Number six now, go to settings, personalization, colors, and disable transparency effects. Go to settings, system, multitasking, and disable snap windows. I have researched and found out that having these enabled, for whatever reason, it seems to aid in increasing latency. Disabling just those two things alone seems to significantly reduce it. I could tell you reboot the PC, wait another two minutes and run latency mod, just to see if you notice anything different or not. However, there's a couple more things I want you to do. It's up to you whether you want to pause this video and do that now or wait until the end of this video and try to use latency mod again it's up to you however i'm moving on to point eight you want to open powershell as admin if you do that by right clicking on the windows icon in the lower left corner copy and paste this right here now this is going to give you the ultimate performance power plan you can skip this if you already have it if there's something particular about your ultimate performance power plan that you've already tweaked then I would suggest you not doing this all right because I'm going to ask you to do something more than just use the ultimate performance power plan so pay attention you want to open and type power and sleep settings I'd usually type it in it shows up for me go to additional power settings and select the ultimate performance power plan once you've done that you want to open PowerShell back up with again admin rights you want the admin version of PowerShell. You want to do that when you're using it to enable Ultimate Power Plan. You want to use it again for this particular tweak. It's called Lock All Driver DPCs to One Core. Now, technically, you can do a research on it by default, and it makes sense that Windows seems to spread the load of DPC operations to most of your cores. However, I have found that this was done back in Windows 7, if I'm not mistaken, I'm not sure, but when you revert it back to one core, it seems to help improve mouse movement, but that mouse has to be on another core. Now, I did that in another video. You can go back and look at that. You, in other words, your mouse should not be on core zero because you're gonna put DPC and all driver-related DPC operations to core zero. You want to copy this and copy it into PowerShell with admin rights and hit enter. 
reason why I said do this first tweak is because this should cause you to reduce mouse sensitivity in games if you are using a value of five or higher as in the game. I want using a value much lower than five. I went down to a three and I still was able to have the movement and turn radius as if I was on a controller. That's the important part. However, it will not fix mice that have a built-in acceleration that you cannot disable. And I come to find out, I own about, oh my gosh, I stopped count, five, six mice. And I realized that I was buying mice that were popular on YouTube, but had mouse acceleration that you just could not disable. And I found out later on that Windows, even though Windows can quote unquote give you some level of mouse acceleration, it's nothing like the built in mouse acceleration based on how that mouse is programmed. You will know that you have mouse acceleration because for some reason you can't even use 1600 DPI in Windows desktop because your mouse flies off the screen whenever you touch it. See how I'm moving my mouse right now? This is a 1600 DPI and I am not, my mouse isn't doing this. My mouse, me touching it a little bit doesn't cause it to do this, like this, you know. It doesn't cause it to do this by just tapping it. If you set your mouse to 1600 DPI and it instantly goes across the screen, you have mouse acceleration. I don't know how to tell you to disable it. You have to buy another mouse. I, you know, I can get into with you about which mouse to buy, but you can research it yourself, figure out what mouse you prefer. You may not even have mouse acceleration. I won't want to go into telling you to buy a mouse when you don't have that problem. You need to understand if whether or not you do have that problem. And that's what I'm telling you right now. You will know if you have that problem when you can't use higher DPI settings. You go to 3200 DPI and it's like you can't even you can't even click on the, the the start button on your screen you can't even click on the windows icon it's just so hard for you to navigate because you can't do micro movements and you can't do simple fast swipes or twitch movements that's how you know that your mouse seems to have mouse acceleration the higher the DPI is I don't understand it it's not talked about a lot but it's there and I know I'm getting off subject talking about this a lot but I need you to understand that you have to understand what kind of mouse you have if you're always doing 400 to 800 DPI because anything higher you cannot control your mouse has uncontrollable mouse acceleration and you need to invest in another mouse if you want to know what other mouse that you need to buy you can comment in the uh, comment section and I can direct you to some ideas uh, on mouse that I know that seem to work. Now I'm moving on with that because I believe I explained that enough. Now the next tweak is the tweak that made you want to go to use the ultimate performance power plan called the you want to disable an idle setting in Windows that seems to be enabled even though you think you're disabled. It. You can only do that through this command right here. You're going to disable it. And you're going to set it active to the current power plan scheme. So you're going to do this first and hit enter. Then you're going to do this and hit enter. Once you do that, now what this does is it transforms your ultimate performance power plan to cause your CPU to always be at full speed. This is always going to be at 100. I'm going to show you. I'm going to show I'm going to type it in for you because you need to see this. If I go to ultimate... It's going to jump to 100. You see that? It's always going to be at 100%. It doesn't mean that your CPU is at 100%. It's just how Windows is reading it. What ultimately happens is that your, your CPU is at full speed right now. And it's available to be utilized at 100%. There is no idle states that are working right now. And it's always going to be 100%. Now, I would suggest you go into game because this is going to increase your temperatures at the same temperature range that you normally game in, except you're at desktop. So I do not suggest you use this all the time, even though you have a good heat sink and fan or water cooling solution. I would suggest that you alternate between the two 
Always use your main high performance power plan. But then just before you start a game, go to the ultimate performance power plan, play your game, and then when you're done, go back to whatever you're using. Okay? It makes sense? There's something you have to remember. Because if you do not, uh, what will happen is, is that your CPU is going to get hot all the time, just sitting there doing nothing. And I don't know what kind of cooling solution you have. I water cool. So I don't have a problem. But you do if you do not or you do not have an adequate uh, all in one water cool solution. You've got some of those cheap models that, you know, it, it's good for you to gain for an hour or two. But you might want to get off for an hour and let it cool off kind of thing. You know what you got. You know what you bought. All right. So having said that, <coughs> these tweaks work. They definitely work. I've noticed that when you use latency mon, your latency should drop down once you use this along with the ultimate performance you know power plan also in game you will seem like you're a little bit ahead of the player it's it's kind of it's kind of freaky because you'll be able to acquire target a lot better because you've always been able to do it it's, it's unfortunate that your setup never allowed you to do it until now until you use this setup you'll start being able to hit your targets more you just start being able to twitch from one target to the next. Whatever that program is that they use, Steam, that's what it is. Aim Labs versus uh, Kovac, I think it is. Uh, if you use any of if both of those, Aim Labs or Kovac, try to see if you improve your aiming on those applications. See if you get a higher score using this tweak. If you do, you do know at that point that you have reduced your latency and been able to acquire targets a lot faster and more consistently. And that's the importance of those applications. So give that a try. Video is a little long winded. I, I know that it's a little longer than I normally, but I want to make sure that you understand what these tweaks do. They are both revertible. The first one that will I'll lock all driver DPCs to one core. You can revert that by deleting the registry. You have to use reg edit, find where this is located, look for the word thread DPC enable and delete it and reboot the PC. So you wanna look for this, do a search, find it, make sure it's found here. Cause if it's found elsewhere, that is something that Windows did. Do not mess with it. You want to find it here with session manager kernel and etc so delete that reboot the pc and the change has been reverted back and windows will use your cores as necessary to run all driver tpc so the second one it says enable disable you can disable this by making sure that you go back to ultimate performance power plan don't do it on the power plan you're on because it's not enabled there you want to go to ultimate performance power plan you want to copy this paste it enter then copy this paste it enter and you can look on your screen on your task manager right see i pull it back up you can look on your task manager and you can see that it's no longer 100 percent and that's how you know it's disabled and then reboot the pc reboot it that way you know that the uh because if it doesn't show that still reboot the pc i do hope this helps you i've spent a lot of time researching this see what works best with the least amount of side effects and making sure that if you are not comfortable with this or if it makes your cpu too hot you can revert those changes but you yourself have to take a level of responsibility and understanding that this this second tweak i call it a last resort for a reason because you have to remember to disable this by using your normal power plan after gaming or else your cpu is going to remain at those higher temperatures at desktop that is important that you need to know and that you need to be cognizant of every time you boot up i do thank you for your time happy gaming have a good day